In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the M84 decoder from Merklin. It's intended for the Merklin Motorola, Merklin MFX, and also the DCC digital systems. In the box, you're going to find a warranty card and an instruction manual. And the decoder itself. If you've been around Merklin for a while, you may remember these switch boxes with four on-off switches. And this M84 decoder is nothing but a digitized modern version of that controller box. Just like your old switch boxes, it has four switched outputs and it has a input for your digital signal, typically directly from your digital controller or from your track. On the bottom, you see these contacts. These are for the hobby signals to connect them to the decoder. There's an optional power port. It can only be used in conjunction with a 6822. And there is a connector port to connect more M83 and M84 modules to each other. On the top side are a few more ports, and we will discuss those in a minute in the video. And your little box to set the digital address. There you see the female portion of the connector and that's the male portion to slide these decoders side by side and connect them together. There's two instruction booklets, one with instructions in German, English, French and in Dutch. And then there's a second booklet with instructions in Spanish, Italian, Swedish, and Danish. The instructions are fairly limited. You only get a few pages worth of instructions. And that's one of the reasons I decided to make this video and hopefully show you what all you can do with this M84 decoder. So pay attention and let's get started. Now it's time to decide if you want to use this decoder in DCC mode or in the older Merklin Motorola mode. If you're using a new central station, I'd advise you to use the DCC mode simply because that gives you more addresses. You turn the DCC mode on and off at the last dip switch, the number 10. And as you can tell, it's right now in the on position, which means DCC. If I would want to use Merkle Motorola, I switch it to off like here. And it puts this decoder back in the Merkle Motorola mode. So we'll set that up for DCC. And now we have to assign an address. Because there's four outputs on the decoder, we're only assigning the address for the first output and then the decoder automatically assigns the subsequent numbers to the other outputs. For example, if we use address number 77, the decoder gives this one 78, this one 79 and the fourth port will be automatically address number 80. So let's go ahead and use that in this example and for 77 you can see dip switch 1 needs to be off, 2 needs to be off, the third one needs to be on, fourth one off and the fifth one needs to be on. So only number 3 and number 5 we need to set to on. Also notice there's no power, no connections to this right now, that's important. And so I'm going to switch the third switch, 1, 2, 3, and then the fifth switch to on, to the up position. So now the address for this decoder should be set to 77 on the first, 78, 79 and 80. So let's go ahead and hook it up to our track power. That's normally red and brown. Red for your center rail, brown for your outer rail. Notice my uh, power is still off while I make these connections. 
On my test wire I use green instead of brown, but just realize in real life that's going to be brown. I'm going to start off with making a mistake. I'm going to switch the two wires so you can see what happens when you switch the two wires. They don't want you to solder these, they want you to just twist the ends. That gets you a better contact in these screw type connectors. And the screwdriver out of our little 7900 tool set is perfect for these connections. So I'll loosen them up, both of them. And like I said, I'm going to switch the two wires so that you can see what happens when I do. So I put the red one in the brown port and I put the brown wire in the red port. There we go. And I will turn the power on. You see the decoder is not happy. Fast blinking between the two lights and you hear a little noise. So we better fix that real quick. Power is back off. And we're going to put these wires in the right way. Twist my ends again. Okay. Red into the red port, brown into the brown port. Now, fix this wire real quick. And now we're gonna turn the power back on. Much better. One blinking light underneath the red. That's exactly what we need. So now we're gonna register the decoder. Pull this down, I'll hit edit. And the bottom option that we have is discover MFX items. Click on it. And then it asks you, would you like to search for MFX accessories? Yes. And if such an item is found, then the item is, we're going to keep that address. Remember, we gave it address 77 through 80. So we're going to keep it. And then we hit OK. You can see that the central station detected a new MFX decoder. And it's going to read all the settings and register them. And you can already see here on the bottom of the screen it added the four solenoid items. And it also added them here in my menu on the top. And there they are. So these four items and you could turn them off and turn them on. And then of course you can, you can take these and you can place them somewhere when you go to the trackboard menu. And then if you look at the decoder, try to get both of these in view. If I switch one of these, you can see the red light comes on. And you can see that the LEDs on the decoder match the settings on the screen. Not enough hands here, but I'll try to do it where you can kind of see it. And the third one, you can see it matches and I can also, of course, do it here. So that turned on the decoder, that's good news. Then we can get a little more advanced. We can go back into edit mode. And then we can go to edit article list. And then for example, we can grab the decoder and they named it A1. And you could call it whatever you want to and we're going to call this M84-1, our first M84 decoder. So hit the check mark. Now, 
you see it's named M84-1. We use the DCC protocol, remember, by setting that tenth switch to on. Hey, it knows the address. It starts at 77. It's a K84. And here is a little bonus. It also shows you how the dip switches should, should be set. The third one on, the fifth one on, and the tenth one for the, uh, the DCC protocol on. And that's all there is to that. And then you can hit OK. And we can close this up. And now, of course, you can pull this back down and then edit your trackboard to place these switches wherever you want them to be. Now, in its simplest form, this is just a digital on-off switch. See this as four light switches. They're actually slightly more advanced because it's a two-pole switch. In position one, you can turn something on, and in the other position, if something is connected, you could turn something else on. So it's perfect for signals, kind of obvious here, green or red, either way. Uh, you could turn on track power in your stop section of a portion of the track. And obviously with red, there would be no wire coming out of red, the train would stop. And then you connect your center rail power to the center port. And then the stop section of the track is connected to the green portion of your port. You turn it to green, the power will flow from the center port through this to your center rail track, to the stop section, and the train would start to move. You could also turn on lights in buildings if you wanted to do that digitally or a windmill or whatever you have on your layout. Now we've seen that we can control these ports in a digital way. We can also override the digital and control these with switches. So you could have read switches that will also set these ports besides you being able to digitally control them. And that could be handy for stop sections, for automation, or again, in my example of the windmill, you may have a switch somewhere on the layout where a visitor can turn on and off the windmill simply with a switch instead of having to go into the digital system. For that, we use these top ports. You'll have the ground wire connected to this, and then whatever, there's gonna be a switch between the ground and one of these ports and that will turn one of those ports on or off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little test wire so I can show it to you. And I'm going to connect that to this ground. And again, you can have read switches in between, uh, on off switches, push button switches, whatever you desire. So I'm connecting this to this port. And then we're going to do a very simple setup you can see uh, that would be port number one. So this would be port number two. And I'm going to touch this wire and ground it right here. And you can see that port switch to number two. And again, I can do the reverse. I can touch port number one and you see it turns back to red. And this counts for all the other ones. So um, one, two, three, four, five is activated right now, the red LED. So if I want to set the third port to green, I have to hit the number six, which is this one. And I'll just hit it up here. And you see you manually switched that port now. So again, these ports can be controlled digitally. We did this with address uh, 77, 78, 79, and 80. You can also have switches set up and control those ports manually as well really neat feature. Then the last thing I need to talk about up here is this off and on. That is set to power these circuit board outputs. And these are designed this way so that you can plug the hobby version of the signals to these ports. If you don't use these ports for hobby signals, they advise you to turn this off because that um, reduces the power consumption of this decoder. Okay, 
It looks complicated, but it is a simple slider switch. Right now it's on, and now I set it to off. That's all there is to that. Hopefully this video explains you some of the features of the M84 decoder, what you can do with it, and how you can program and connect it to the central station. In a future video, I hope to show you how to hook up the hobby signals to the M84 and also how to program the outputs for special light effects. Drop by our website, ajckids.com, and hopefully you learned something from this video and enjoyed it. If so, please give us a thumbs up and see you next time.